Hey, g'day folks, how you going? When people talk about 12 volt fridges for the car, they're generally referring to these sort of things here. This is a 40 litre Waco, got a compressor in the back, does a really good job. They're sort of priced around about the five, six hundred dollar plus up, depending on what size you get. Uh, but today we're going to look at a different type of uh, 12 volt fridge, uh, a thermo cooler, and in particular the Ridge Rider one. So while I run the intros, go down the bottom down there and hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. That'll let you know when I've uploaded another video. And, well, look, you're going to. Anyway, you might as well hit the thumbs up while you're down there. That helps the channel out really well. Anyway, we'll see you in a minute. So what is a thermal cooler? Well, a normal fridge uses gas that heats up and cools down and does all that sort of stuff to get your stuff cold inside the fridge. A thermo cooler uses a handful of electronic parts to basically do the same thing. It's a whole pile of uh, weird electronics wizardry going on there, I tell you. Um, let me give you a bit of a backstory of my experiences first. Now, back in maybe 1980s, mid-1980s, I bought a, um, a so-called 12-volt uh, electronic car fridge. And I say so-called because really the only way anything inside that was going to be cold was if you left the lid open in the Antarctic. Absolutely hopeless it was, and uh, I sort of gave it away and thought that's a waste of time. Then about... Uh, maybe 13 years ago, I um, had to go east to pick up a, a coach, a bus, uh, with another driver from here in Perth. And um, he had uh, one of these ones here, a, a Waco, I think this is a seven litre uh, thermo cooler fridge. And um, when we came back across the Nullarbor, I was quite impressed. I mean, the drinks weren't like icy cold, but they were cold enough to, to make you feel better as you're coming through the hot weather. Um, so I actually bought one and I've actually had about three of these at the moment. Um, I mean I was using them pretty much 24-7 so they were always on. So I suppose over the you know, 13 years uh, going through three fridges probably isn't too bad I suppose. Uh, at some point down the line I ended up buying this one here which um, I got from Dick Smith's which was an electronic shop here in Perth and um, oh, actually it was all around Australia for that fact and uh, this worked quite well it actually would create ice on the element uh, inside uh, and this worked really well the only problem with it was because I was driving a 24 volt truck uh, a bus um, everything that was on 12 volt had to operate through a, uh, a converter to drop it from 24 down to 12 and generally it was always a 10 amp converter um, now uh, in the bus there were other things that were running off that inverter so um, I had to take into account how much power I was using now this one here the Waco ran I think about two and a half amps with this one was about five amps so this worked a lot better but it used half the capacity of, of the uh, converter so um, I had the potential of um, blowing fuses or, or you know, overloading the system um, why is that important to you in a car because in your car, your cigarette lighter socket, which you'll be running it out of, um, is either a 7.5 amp or a 10 amp um, uh, socket. And again, if you are running things like uh, GPS's phone charger and all that, that all uses power out of that socket. Having something that's at 5 amp, 
you're starting to get close to its maximum uh, capacity. Uh, that's why I always went using this one. Um, just recently, or about three months ago, I bought this one here from Ridge Rider, and this is the one we're going to review today. Um, so um, let's have a look a bit around it. So we'll look around this, you can see on the front, nice big display down here. Um, this is a, I think a 12 litre um, fridge and um, it, uh, with the buttons on the front, you've got your power off and on. Um, you've got a, uh, that button there for changing the settings and this one here, they say it can go down to about uh, 25 degrees below ambient temperature. So that means if it was 25 degrees outside or around it, it would drop the inside temperature down to about zero. If it was 40 degrees outside, 25 off of that, what's well, about 15, so it would probably go down to 15 degrees. Uh, also, with all of these ones, they also do heating. Now this one in particular, uh, this can go up to 65 degrees. So you can't really warm things up in here, but you can keep things warm inside here. Um, now, uh, I have had this set on zero and the element inside freezes up. My drinks feel like they've come almost out of a freezer. They're really, really cold. This works really good. Um, at one point, I was in an area where it was 42 degrees, and this on the front uh, dial said it was about eight degrees on the inside, but the drinks inside were pretty much the same as what they were all the time. So I'm sort of thinking perhaps maybe the, the, dis the temperature display not quite so accurate. Uh, because the drinks inside were extremely cold, they were really good. There was no difference between it being um, 10 degrees around it or 42 degrees around it. Um, so um, it has a, obviously a carry strap for moving it around. One of the big things I liked about this, and with the other ones, I had to buy a separate um, 12 volt, uh, 20, 240 volt to 12 volt uh, little converter box uh, to be able to run this in the house. But with this, this has its own built-in 240 volt power supply. So you can plug 240 volt in here, converts it down to 12 and runs the fridge. Uh, and then you've got a plug there to plug your 12 volt in as well. Um, let's look at the cons. So what are the cons about this? Got to be honest, it's a little bit hard to find something. Um, I've got a couple of things, but it is really kind of nitpicking. I like to drink 600 ml bottles because I can reseal them, so I don't have to drink the whole thing in one hit. And this one and this one are the same. When you stand a bottle up in there, you can't close the lid down, um, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. It'd be great if people, when they design these things, they took the average bottle into consideration. They could have made this a little bit narrower, a little bit taller, enough to be able to um, to uh, fit a bottle in standing up. Um, the Waco actually was a bit better because with the lid had this hole in the top of it, you can put a bottle in it and close it down and it was perfect. Um, the other thing I liked about the Waco as well, it had a, um, a locking lid where this one it just basically clips in uh, and it is possible to close the lid um, if a couple of bottles are in here um, and not in the right position. They could um, just leave the lid open just a little bit which of course affects how well it cools down. Um, so what I actually do is uh, I got a couple of petitions in here that my wife had left over from something she had bought and I'd uh, blue tacked them together and then blue tacked them in here to make like a bit of a wall. And uh, cause I lay me bottles down in the bottom here and I got this little compartment at the back where I can put a whole pile of little chocolates and things and that keeps them cool. So uh, that's actually worked out quite well for me. Um, but yeah, that's sort of, the only other thing that I could really sort of say could be a con is on the front here, there is a fan here which cools the electronics which makes the fridge cold 
Um, now this fan is actually makes a fair bit of noise for what it is. It, it's fairly noisy. And if you look at the other models of this, there's three models that they make of this type of fridge. Uh, the other two models actually have two fans in it. Now, normally it wouldn't really be too much of a problem, but if you were thinking like you're camping and you want to put this in the tent overnight to keep it safe, particularly if you've got the bigger one with the two fans, I think it'd be like sleeping next to, door to a jumbo jet. Because it makes a fair bit of noise. Um, I use this in the coach that I'm driving and I have, I have another driver with me and when the new drivers come in all the time the first thing they say is what's running in here? They're trying to work out what's still going when they've turned the motor off and it's actually the sound of this thing running. Um, but at the same point I guess that means the fan works fairly efficiently because the fact that this gets so cold. So in conclusion, what do I think? Well, I paid, uh, I paid about $90 for this. They retail for about 120 something or other. Um, I think I got my money's worth. I quite like it. It works really well for me and keeps my drinks nice and cold um, in the hot. So I uh, can't complain about that. So um, that's it for this one. Just a, a quick review of this, uh, of this fridge. Um, I hope it hasn't been too noisy. I'm actually shooting this at home. Uh, I've got a main road across the back over here, so uh, and we've got planes going over the top, so uh, hopefully you haven't been able to hear too much. This in the background here, this is all pretend, this is all green screen. It's kind of handy though, because, uh, you know, I could shoot this here, or I could shoot it there, or I could shoot it over here. Go wherever I like, so... Uh, yeah, so it's a bit of fun anyway. So anyway, that's it for this one. So uh, again, go down the bottom down there and hit the, uh, the, the uh, thumbs up. It helps the channel out. So uh, until next time, happy travels.